What's going on, Capital Extra? Your boy Robert Bruce right here. You know the vibes. Lockdown. We're coming from home right now. On the video chat, I've got someone that's a bit of a legend, bit of an inspiration to a lot of youths oh. out there right now. Boxing extraordinaire. The body snatcher. Dillian White. What's going on, bro? bro? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Respect, man. What's happening? Training camp? Yeah, good. Just out uh, training, getting ready. I'm meant to be fighting sometimes since. Just waiting for the the date and stuff, so just trying to keep motivated and keep going, man, because there's been a lot of changes to the date. I was meant to fight the 2nd of May, which is what, mm. a month ago or something, uh, almost a month ago. Yeah, coming here yeah, to the beginning of this month. What are they saying? What information? Well, right now, we we're waiting to see. I think we're looking at the end of July, maybe early August. So it's waiting to see now what's what, man. So with your training camp, what do you reckon is the hardest part of training? Um, probably, probably the dieting and um, a dieting and just, 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 just going to the gym every day. But just going to the gym every day, you know, when you're tired, when your legs hurt, having to do legs while your legs is hurting, it's like you go to the gym and they go, "We're doing legs today." And you're like, "What? What did we just do legs like two days ago?" And they go, well, you got le- well, you got two leg session this week, and you're like. All right, cool. Then they go, okay, we're doing bike the day after. And you're like, wait, hang on a minute. That's technically three leg session. <laughs> <laughs> it must be hard, yeah, because you know it's all for your benefit. So you can't even complain like that. Yeah, no, it is hard. I don't mind. When I get into gear and I get going and I'm working, I don't mind. It's like, it's just like cool. I just get it done. But, you know, for a split second, you're sitting there thinking to yourself, like, are they taking a the mic? But then after, you know. I hear you. What's normally on the diet when you're off training then? I just eat a lot of Caribbean food, man. A lot of <laughs> festival jerk, yeah. lot of fish, lots of beef, lots of jerk chicken, you know, you know, just lots of Caribbean food and African food. I see any food really to be in this. Yeah. <clears throat> but then what in training season is clean and that. Yeah, yeah. Like like this morning I said an omelette um, with some peppers, some onions, spinach. Put a little bit of potatoes in there, and that's it, man. Yeah, yeah no, that's so, sounding correct. That is definitely sounding correct. And yeah. what about music wise? What's your music taste at the moment? You know what? My music taste is 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 crazy. Like I can go from listening to to some jazz to 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 to, to, to metal. It just depends on when I'm training because I find if I'm running, I listen to more house stuff. Mm. If I'm on the bike, I listen to more hard stuff. Like probably some some reggae, probably a bit of uh, heavy metal, some, you know, I listen to everything. It just depends. If, if I'm boxing and moving, I like listening to like old school songs, like proper old school songs, you know, like like proper old school jazz. Some that's got a bit of jazz in it, a bit of saxophone, that sort of stuff in it. You know, it just helps with the moving and the rhythm. And it's, it's all about rhythm, you know, in life. Yeah. Everything's about rhythm, man, and it depends. The rhythm doesn't have to, you know, some people get rhythm from different things. Like, if I'm lifting heavy, I find listening to heavy metal or are some real like proper dark Jamaican music, you know what I mean? The the hard stuff, you know what I mean? Some sizzler, some caper that yeah. sort of stuff. I find that helps me in, in these sessions, especially when I'm listening and I think some Movado on, you know, and then it's just like it just gets me in the right place, you know. I hear you man. And you talk about reggae music and your dancehall influences as well. You was actually born in Jamaica right before you moved to South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in Jamaica. I came to London when I was like almost 13. What was that experience like for you? What was life like growing up for you? It was hard, man. Life, <laughs> life was hard for me. You know, I mean, life was hard. Growing up in Jamaica, you hear people say, hey, oh, I'm poor. I never had this. Um, life was hard. I'm like, dude, you had a fridge and a TV. Mm. You know, I think where I grew up, there's only, there's only one TV in the community. And I think, was like something like ten dollars to watch a movie or something, and no $10 way. Was, yeah, ten dollars, ten dollars is a lot. Ten dollars is a lot. Then so, you know that you might have to work and save up for a month to have a little extra money or whatever. But you know, we like I grew up poor. It's just it's not you know it's not it's not a secret. I grew up poor. You know I grew up poor. So for me, life life was a struggle from the day I was born. I was actually born in the middle of a hurricane. You know I mean it was crazy. So life was a struggle. Um. Life was a struggle. Like, I remember our roof blowing off the house. You know, my, my, well, my mom told me anyway, you know. Yeah. My mom told me, oh, my sister's out the roof blew off the house and this and the other. So imagine giving birth 
in the middle of all that's going on. So life, life has just been a struggle for me. It's just been a struggle, you know. It's always been a struggle since the day I was born, man. And so I'm, I'm used to hardship. I'm used to struggling. So it's just what it is, man. But if that's the way that you entered into the world, you must have been destined for something, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what's interesting? You know, I want to see how I leave. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, I want to see if how I leave is going to top the way I come. Are you going to top it? <laughs> Let, let, let's see. Let's see what's gonna happen. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, just hanging there in my nineties, wait for another hurricane to come. Yeah. <laughs> just blow up on the wind. I hear you, man. Hopefully, we ain't got to think about that anytime soon. But yeah, yeah, years to come, we'll definitely be following up the story. <laughs> so then, yeah. you moved to what South Brixton? Yeah, and I, I moved to Streatham first, like, like Brixton first. Hill, Brixton Hill, and then from there to Brixton and then and then that's it man stayed there for years for years even I still I still even I still I still technically live in Brixton even now mm. you know I just have my little hideout just on the outskirts that I dust yeah. sometimes you know I hear you and you say boxing sort of like changed the course of your life but how did you fall into the roadside of stuff from moving well, your whole journey from first coming to the country, getting caught up in the stuff you didn't want to get caught up in, and then boxing. You know what it is, you know, obviously, you come here, you speak different, look different, dress different. And at the age I come, I didn't start school till I was 14. So, you know, obviously sorting all this stuff out and getting citizenship and this and the other, I didn't start till I was 14. So by that age, everyone's already formed their little gangs and had their little crews and stuff. and. People came from primary school together and people thought it was funny to, to take the make out of the way I speak or dress. Obviously, you know, obviously, you know, I don't know where you, where's your parents from or whatever, but, you know, ja- uh, Jamaicans dress differently and we act differently, we speak mm. different. People thought it was funny. People used to get into the mix and I, started, and I just started knocking people out because that's what I know to do. I know to fight, you know what I mean? I, I've yeah. been fighting since the day I was born. That's what I know to do to fight. So, Got expelled from school, got sent to these youth centers and whatever these um, places they sent you, you know. And then one thing led to another. And then obviously, one of the biggest problems is finding, you know, that, that need to fit in. That, you know, obviously, you want to fit in, you want to be cool, you, you're trying to learn a new culture. And then you start hanging out with the man them on the road and stuff. And then one thing leads to another. And then obviously, people know you could fight. But people know, if people know you could fight, obviously, when stuff happens and there's a problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll fight him. I'll do this and I'll do that. Bit. And then I became known for knocking people out around around the streets of South London. And then, mm. you know, when people know you can knock people out, then they're like, no, nah, no, nah, we, we can't fight with this guy. We have to, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we have to bring, yeah, we have to bring a tool or whatever. And then it, one thing, you know, and then you end up getting more and more involved into things. And then it just, you know, it, it, it just sort of just happened right, you know, and the next thing you know, you're on the run from police or, or, or someone stabbed one of your boys or someone shot one of your boys. You know, so it's hard for some people to really think about it. I'm just speaking about it. I'm just speaking about it now that this and I'm just realizing, wow, it's not a normal thing. You know, people are probably thinking, wow, you know, it's not, it's not a normal thing, but to us growing up, it was a not, it was a norm. It was like, oh, okay, mm. today, okay. The man's done this to one of our guys. We need to get them back or whatever. Or these guys have come to the area and done this. Or they're from a different postcode. It's just, it's just, it's just all madness. Like a lot of the time, as a youth, you don't even know why you're doing stuff or, 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 or what for. It's just like, ah, we got a problem. Come, come, come. Let's go, let's go. Mm. Then one thing led to another. And then <clears throat> the guns and the knives and stuff started to get involved. And people started getting all the things. And then you try and top the other area because it's like okay that man's got this we need to get this and, and then it, it just ends up being a madness you don't know what you're doing like as a as a you you don't know what you're doing you don't know what you're doing you're just following people trying to fit in and you're just thinking oh yeah they done something to one of our guys and then it's vice versa they come to the area shoot stuff up you go to the you know it's just vice versa and it just yeah. becomes silly you know what was the reality check moment for you then me, yeah, get into major trouble, <clears throat> and my mum saying, "Yo, listen, I can't afford to lose another child to to this thing here. You know, what I mean, I can't afford to 
you know, I can't afford to see another child and my son grow up and just being killed or just being a waste, going to prison and just, just not doing nothing with his with his life, you know what I mean? And then, you know, it started to hit home. You know, because I love my mom. My mom, my mom's on real. So for me, it was like, it just started to hit home. And then one thing led to another. I had kids and other things. And then it just, you know, because I had kids young, I, you know, it just it just ended up one thing led to another. And then you know, I started, um, basically, I had to go to a, a youth offending um, yeah. place. I got in trouble and etc. etc. et cetera. Et cetera. Mm. But on the way to where the place is, I had to go through Brixton, Brixton Hill, Brixton Road, and that, and then I had to go through three different areas. Mm. And then it was just madness. Um, I told him, listen, I, I can't come here to sign on and to, to, to report in because I have to go through three different areas. And every time I'm going through these areas, the problem I might get killed or I might get stabbed or something might happen. And they was like, oh, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. Didn't believe me. One day, I was on the bus and then some some guys, well, 159 bus, the one, the old ones that never had doors at the back back in the day. And like three guys running on the bus and sleeping and tried to stab me up. I got mm-hmm. I got stabbed a couple of times, but there wasn't bad ones. There's little, like, little stabs in there. Because yeah. obviously, I could fight and I could defend myself, so... I was fighting, and then I went. I went to the place. I went in there. There was all the blood in my hands and stuff and other things. And I said, "Listen, see, this is what I'm saying to you guys." And then eventually, they they realized that what I was saying was real. So they moved me to somewhere else, and then I met another guy. And then he took me to the gym, to a friend with a friend because he was a big guy. He lift weights and stuff, but mm. he did Wing Chun. He took me to the gym because a friend of his did um kickboxing, Thai boxing. Took me to the gym and goes, oh, you like fighting, blah, blah, blah. I took me to the gym and then I just fell in love with it, man. I just, and then it was so hard. The training was so hard. And I was getting, I was getting my, my, my butt handed to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because obviously I could fight and I could knock people out. Mm. So I was going there and steam these guys. And I'll just cover up and bum, bum, up. And I'll be like, whoa, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, and then. I kept him going back and back and back and back. And then he just takes over my life, man. And then it was less time in the street, more time in the gym. And then when I was, was in the gym, I was too tired. And I was thinking about the next session and mm. I just got hooked. And then one thing led to another. And then next thing you know, I'm having these fights. I'm fighting these guys. And then it's like, well, I'm becoming one of the, the big one of the British kickboxing, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, because it was kickboxing first. What was it? MMA or kickboxing? Kickboxing first, first and then I did yeah. MMA in between as well. And then I actually went to boxing to learn to box better for the MMA and the kickboxing. And then my boxing coach said, "Listen, like you have a lot of ability. I believe with the right training, the right management, you can be something." And I was like, "Hey, okay, yeah, sure, 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 whatever." And then played it like that. And then he, 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 he kept on forcing me, forcing me. I had an amateur fight after training for like two months. You know, boxing wasn't an arm for me. I was just a slugger. I, was just, mm-hmm. you know, I thought that fight was with Anthony Joshua. As you could see, I was just slugging with him. I was yeah. just slugging. I was just, I was just, I was just fucking him. I was just fucking him. I was on him like, like a dog. I was just on him and just fucking him. And then one thing led to another, I had another few fights and the ABA started acting a bit funny, saying, oh, because I did kickboxing, which is nonsense. You know, because there's many fights before me that did kickboxing and I didn't suspect. And then after I kept on having problems, and then they basically said to me, listen, this is the choice. Go professional or you never box again. And I was like, well, I've only had seven fights. Like, um, I need experience. Really? And they go, well, you know, you ha- well, that's it. Go professional or you never box again. You know? But I think that was because, obviously, they had plans for, for Joshua in, and I came in and I just, I just, I just came in and just, okay. you know what I'm saying? They was investing it because that's what they do as amateurs. They watch you and they pick you and they select you and they groom you and they grow you to oh, go yeah. to the Olympics. And that was the plan for him. And he did go to the Olympics and he won the Olympics. So well done to them and whatever. But um, <clears throat> I came in, I was just a street kid. As you could see, he had on the full amateur gear. I just had on some, 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 
white vest, some normal, some, <laughs> I, I didn't think I wore boxing shoes. I think I wore pimples in the fight yeah. or something. But, you know, I just came in and fucked him, beat him, and then ever since then it was a problem. And then mm. you know, I got forced to turn professional before before I wanted to. Obviously, I wanted to go to the Olympics. I didn't know at the time I'd have gone to the Olympics in Jamaica, actually, but oh. big mistake on my part, you know? Yeah. I hear you. It's so interesting because with boxing, you always hear about politics. I don't know if it's in all sports, but it feels like in boxing in particular, the politics is crazy. You know what? There's politics in all sports, but in boxing, it's risk because the rules and regulations is different. I can throw a towel over my shoulder and walk in the gym and say, yeah, yeah. I'm a boxing coach. I can just watch some pad session on YouTube and because of, there's so many youngsters in the gym that needs direction and, and guidance, they're just yeah. looking for something because let's be honest, a lot of people who become boxers are actually from single parents or broken home or kids who's been abused or, or kids who ain't really done who ain't really done what they should have done or kids who ain't got no guidance. So, so if I walk into a gym and there's a, a 15-year-old boy and I can get in his head and tell him something, look, and manipulate him enough, then, you know, he will start trusting me. And then, you know, so it's just mad. And then if I beat someone I shouldn't beat, then they're like, okay, we've invested money and time into this guy. No, 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 no. You know, even now, even now as a, as a pro, that's the same thing that's happening to me. It's like, I've been number one. I've been mandatory for so long. I've been beating these guys. They keep sending guys some, to beat me. And I keep beating these guys. If you look at my last six, seven fights, I weren't supposed to beat them guys. Them guys have been boxing for 20 years. Mm. Them guys have had 100 plus amateur fights, 100 plus this, you know. Um, them guys have been top 10 for years. Them guys have been beating top 10 guys. I shouldn't be beating those guys, you know what I mean? So, I hear you. you know, the fact is, I, I keep, you know, I keep surprising them and I keep doing better than what they think I was going to do and what I should do. So, it becomes a major problem. What was, in terms, let's stay on boxing, yeah? In terms of your career, what was the major turning point for you? Because me, I'll say I'm a casual boxing fan. So mm -hmm. my boxing interest yeah. comes in and around fights. So on fights, mm -hmm. I'm there. Pay-per-view, I'm watching all the pre-interviews, every press conference. But when it's off fight, I can sort of drift off. So what was the mm -hmm. turning point for your career in terms of probably, boxing? Probably the, probably the last time to Joshua. Yeah. You know, because obviously someone I've beaten before and up until that stage, like I said, I was just a, I was just a, a straight knockout guy. I was, just, I, was just, I was just fucking these guys. I was just like, anyone I hit is going to go to sleep. It's only a matter of time. So I didn't particularly train properly. I didn't live properly. I just turned up and just knocked guys out. I was, you know, I, I had a lot of injuries. I was training wrong. I was doing all this crazy stuff. And, you know, I was just being... What, what what I was born to do was, was just to be a tough, strong guy. And mm. then the first time I went up against someone who, who was an athlete, someone who, who's been in the GB program, someone who, who, they, who they put a lot of money and time into. And then it was like a proper top level racehorse racing against some, 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 some park pony, you know what I mean? So, you know, he was in shape. I wasn't in shape. You know, I had injuries. And then for me, that was like, you know what? Uh, firstly, I'm going to fix my shoulder because this thing's gone on for too long. I fixed my shoulder. They said, oh, that's it. My boxing career is done because my shoulder was so bad. I left it for so long. Mm. Like, a lot of my shoulder was grind, grinded out and had other issues and other things. But I fixed it. You know, and then after I made the move to Loughborough, and then I'd, I made, I got a good team of people and then I just kept on excelling. I just kept on excelling and then I was like, wow. Like, you know, like I thought I was training hard and I thought I was, I was the man and was dangerous. And after when I got there, I realized that, wow, this is the level. Let's kick up, yeah. This is, because when I did my first assessment, I was even, like, there's average athlete and there's elite athlete. I was below the average athlete, but mm -hmm. I, was comp I was competing at elite level. It was mad. So and imagine how you bring that. You bring that below average up now, what you can do sort of Yeah, I, and that's what's been at me. It, it's been climbing. But I said to him, listen, this is fight. Fight goes more than your athletic stats. But now I'm going to add the athletic stats to what I already have because I can fight. If you look at all these guys here, they got, they got their things they do. But 
from my all round point of view, I do everything better than a lot of these guys. I jab better, I move better, I can fight better. You know what I mean? I, I can slug it out. You know what I mean? I can box if I need to. These fights are going to box my way to decision. The fights have been injuries. The fights have been out of shape, but I still find a way to win. Mm. What's been your toughest fight you've been in post Joshua, post that Joshua fight? Oh, I I don't know because I always said um, it is it is my, my toughest fight because it's the only one I lost. You know? mm. So I, I don't know. I don't, it's the only fight I've lost, you know, obviously. And what's annoying is I, be, I beat him already as well. So that was annoying. You know, that yeah. was annoying. That was, <laughs> that's like, you know, you know, that was proper annoying. I actually asked one of my friends, he's a big, big boxing fan. He was saying, do you feel like you have the edge against Joshua because of that early fight? You know what? I just think when me and him fight, it's just a crazy fight, man. You know, he's just one of them fights where we know to to antagonize each other. We know to get into each other's head, you know. And I believe that I've I've improved a lot. You know, he's sort of maxed out. You know, I, mean, I still got room to improve. I'm still still getting better. I'm still getting fit. I'm still getting stronger. I'm still getting quicker. I'm still getting more experience. You know what I mean? You know, he's had a lot more fights than me. He's a lot more experience than me. So I'm still climbing. You know what I mean? I'm still climbing. You know. And Definitely. I've been waiting for my title shot for so long. So when it come. I'm looking to bring the whole smoke and, and the fire, everything. This is what I'm saying. Talk to me about the politics behind why you haven't got that fight yet. Like, why are the routes to, say, a Fury, a Wilder, or Joshua so difficult? What's the politics behind it? Because they know I'm a danger man. They know I'm a danger man. They know, they know that when I come to the party, I'll, re- I'll, I'll, I'll wreck it. They know this. They know this. That's why you got guys like <clears throat> Eric Molina, two free title fight, damn it, Brazil, two free title fight, Joseph Park, all these guys, because they know when I come to the party, I don't come to, to take part, I come to take the whole thing. So they know that obviously I'm a danger, you know? So they 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 just chant, you know, I, I don't know, man. These guys, these guys, you know, I, I don't know, man. These guys are, you know, these guys say a lot of things and oh yeah. I'll fight anyone, I'll do this and that. But they won't. They're just saying it for saying it's sake. You know what I mean? You know, like Fury. I was mandated to fight him. The WBC agreed to give us a bigger belt than the one they entered while at the time. He, he, he thought, oh, they weren't going to do it. They, the mandate, he said no. Joshua, I've been trying to fight Joshua for forever, 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 forever. They tried to make out that they was going to fight me when it was a lie because I said it already the year before. They're going to fight Drew Miller in June in America. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Because if they were serious, they would have fought Miller in the UK at Wembley. But no, mm-hmm. Wembley didn't want that. Wembley said it's only me, Fury, or Wilder. It's the only fight they want went there with me and, and Joshua. Then, you know, he, he could have made the fight with Wembley. It could have been a big fight, you know, ma- major fight. But they tried to come and give me, I think, seven weeks notice after I just fought in December. Mm-hmm. And I've been at home resting and relaxing. And they gave Miller 20 weeks. I'm like, Whoa. yo, like, I'm not journeyman. I'm not coming there to lose. I'm coming to win. Make it a fair level playing field. And we wanted, we wanted 12, 14 weeks of other drug testing. They didn't want to do that as well, you know. Mm. But long story short, Dente Wilder. I've been trying to fight that guy for, 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 for the longest. Yeah. They might as well call the WBC the Wilder Boxing Council, you know, because they made him they made him do whatever he wanted to do, whenever he wanted to do it. He said I was gonna make you wait two years. They allowed him to. You know, mm. they, like, these guys, these guys ain't serious, man. These guys ain't serious, you know. I'm ready, I'm ready to go whenever I wanna go. You know, I mean I wanna fight these guys. I, 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 I I've earned my shot, you know, I've earned my shot. I didn't it's not like someone who accidentally fell into position. Like you see Charles Martin fighting for the IBF title and the other guy fell over and injured his knee and he wins the title, then he gets bashed in in his next fight easy. You know, I earned my shot. I've been fighting in the number one position for a long time. Every fight I have, I keep risking it. Keep risking it, keep risking it. You know, I've, I've earned my shot. I've beaten top, I've beaten more top 10 contenders than the Inter Wilder has. Oh, for real? Yeah. I beat more top ten contenders than, than, than what Tyson Fury have. Beat more top ten more top ten contenders than Joshua have. You know? 
and these are the champions. So ideally, yeah, for you, after your next fight against fucking, how would you like things to pan out? One, how would you like things to pan out? And two, how do you think things will pan out with everyone else in terms of the I'd love fight? to fight either Joshua Wilder Fury in any order, Nick Sato Povetkin in any order. You know, I just want to fight the, the, three, the, three, the three best guys, you know. That's it. That's that. That's it, man. That's it. You know, whichever way, that's it. I just want to fight the three best guys. They say they're the three best. I want to put my stuff up against their stuff and see how, see how it gels, you know. See, mm. I believe I can beat them. I believe I'm capable of beating them. As long as I'm in shape and I'm ready and I'm focused, I know distraction. I believe I beat them. We need to see this happen, man. Who do you think takes it? Fury, Joshua, Wilder, Joshua. Who do you think takes them fights? Boy, I don't know, man. The four of us is, is such even a fight between the four of us. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say, oh, this guy's not this guy. This guy, it's hard, man. Like, like, like you know, who would have fought Fury with the, with, the, with the drop while with a body shot, you know? Mm. Fury, Fury is not a body puncher. He's not a major puncher, but he said, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to smoke while Who would have fought Joshua the lost under his, mm. you know? We never know, man. It's true, but what are you telling me? When you come, you're coming for KOs, fam. Uh, you know, I, it's, I always try to knock someone out. I always try to knock someone out. Sometimes I don't get it. You know, sometimes, I, you know, it, but I always try to knock someone out. You know, I always try and, and knock someone out, you know. That, that's what I try and do, man, you know. There have been fights I've had to box, or fights I've had to, you know, but every single one I fought has been hurt. Everybody I fought has either been knocked down or hurt or knocked out. I hear you, man. I'm definitely looking forward to see what happens next. Hopefully, when we come out of lockdown and stuff, you can get the provoking fight out of the way and then we can see, man. Yeah, yeah. God, really nervous. It's a very hard fight to have with that in the perfect, you know, obviously. Yeah. Olympic gold medalist, you know, former champion. And, you know, he's very good fighter, very good. He's probably the best fighter I fought technically. Technically, from a technique point of view, he's probably the best fighter I fought so far from a te technique point of view. And he's very strong, he's Russian, he's very tough and very determined. So, you know, I I'm expecting one hell of a fight. So, we, man, that's definitely going to be one for all the fans to watch as well, just to get involved with. And you've obviously, on the side now, you've got the TV show that's come out. Or it's coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is it important to put out your story? Because even like the way we've spoken now, I can see how boxing proper change the course of your life why is it why is it important to put out your story and hopefully influence the youths as well because the the kids is our future man without kids we ain't got no future you know we we have to protect the children because people seem to overlook the kids and just say oh yeah yeah them kids are bad kids them kids are written up them kids you know and i know what it's like to be in them communities i know what it's like to be that guy that's been written off, you know. But a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I've been written off, blah, blah. A lot of these guys talk rubbish. A lot of these guys talk rubbish, you know. I know what it's like to be a part of, um, you know, a black inner city family, you know, always got nothing. I always got so much siblings that, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know, um, I know what it's like. I've been around the Asian community. I've been around this community. I've been around that community. And I know what it's like. I know, I know what it's like. And I've been around... You know, like like you got white inner city families that's that suffer just as hard as as white inner city black family. You know what I mean? So I've been around it. I'm an inner city kid, so I've been around it. Growing up, my friends was was mixed heritage and mixed, they was all mixed colored. You know what I mean? And their family was going through the same stuff my family was going through. So I understand. I understand the struggles. I know the struggles. You know, I told people I've gone two days without eating no food. I know the struggles. You know. I know the struggles. I used to say, oh, I'm struggling. And I used to go to school with night trainers. And I never had my night. The first night trainers I had, I think I was 16. I brought it myself. My mum mm -hmm. used to buy me the Jets Ikes. <laughs> you know, you know, because my mum said, boy, I'm not going to pay 50 or 60 pounds for no night trainers. I can get you free trainers for 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, I know the struggles. And because of these things, that's why these kids is going out there and doing things and, and acting out a turn and because they have no guidance. and I know real weird places to turn. It's, I know what it's like. I know what it's like. And many people say, oh, yeah, I know. They can't relate. But I can relate. Mm. You know, and like I said, yeah. 
if these youths don't get educate don't get education or have people that they feel they can reach out to or look up to or feel like oh this guy kind of understand what i'm saying i really kind of get what i'm saying this guy's done it this guy's come from where kind of where i'm from and then he's done it so you know what i mean i can take some sort of inspiration from that guy and try and follow in his footsteps i try and you know that, that's all i want man if i can if i can reach 20 kids around the world then and change their life then i've saved to i've changed 20 lives man that, that's that's a major achievement you know i'm not saying i'm trying to save hundreds of thousands you know because you got to be real yeah but even one is impactful man and what would you say for say someone watching our conversation now as someone that's lived it what one piece of advice could you give to someone that's maybe going through it even if it's that like mindset a practical thing you know what? Self believe and self love, man. It's crazy. You know, can take you so far in life, man. Because a lot of these kids hate themselves because of things they see, all these rappers and all these TV shows and stuff. They hate themselves. They think, ah, oh, yeah, I'm like this. I'm not like that. Oh, yeah, I'm poor, so I'm nothing. Oh, yeah, I haven't got the latest Rolex on or the latest this or the latest that, so I'm nothing, you know? So they hate themselves. You know, and then motivation, they ain't got no motivation because they're thinking, oh, well, I'm never going to be nothing. I'm never going to be a tennis player. I'm never going to be a footballer. I'm never, you, you know, self-belief is, is is crazy, man. You know, it's, but that's like me. I never had no setup. No one didn't take me and say, oh, yeah, this is the plan. This is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to get there. I never had that, man. Never had that, you know. So you need extreme self-belief. With extreme self-belief and self-love, it draws certain people to you. You might not think people is watching or people is paying attention, but when it show resilience and self belief and other things like that, it sometimes draw certain people to you. They'll think, "Well, you know what? This kid's a bit rough on the edges or whatever, but you know what? There's there's something about this kid that I like." Uh, and then if people give you opportunities, you know, what I mean, sometimes you might have to make opportunity for yourself. You might not get no opportunity. You might have to just make them yourself. You know, by working hard and believing, and and you know, it, it is difficult, man. It's very, very difficult. It's very, very difficult to tell people. It's hard, man. It's very hard. What's the right and what's the wrong thing to? Because mm. you don't know people's struggle. You know, me and someone could live the exact same way, but I might have a bit more resilience than them, or they might have a bit more mental than me. So it's difficult. You know, you can me, you can be in the same situation, but it affects you different than it affects me. Yeah. No, 100%, 100%. There's some good stuff in there, though, man. Thank you very much for jumping on the call, bro. It's been, it's been no good, worries, man. man. It's been good. It's been good. No worries, bro. All the best with training as well. Hopefully, we'll see you fight soon. All right, respect, man. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to reach out, man. Thanks, man. No problem at all, bro. No problem. Cheers, bro.